this joint is going to do in order to say what what's the biggest motor or what's the motor that's going to support that. So we got it wrong, we get it wrong, 949 is my team. We got it wrong last year, we had to actually had to shift all the motors up one joint because all of them were under under um, under torque. So these are some equations. Um, you know force, mass times acceleration, it's newtons and pound force. Torque, it's length away from pivot times force. Uh, it's usually calculated in foot pounds and ounces. So, oh thank God, now the math is done. Um, so, we're going to talk about pivots, bars, and links. And these are sort of, your, these are sort of kind of interchangeable. You're going to hear a, a bunch of a stuff about a, a four-bar link or a pivot. And a four-bar link is just four pivots. So a pivot is just where you rotate. So um, we talk about degrees of freedom in the robot. That's sort of, you can sort of take that-ish as how many pivots you have on the robot. There's some degrees of freedom in, in elevators and such, but uh, degrees of freedom. So the first one is I have a little pair of pliers uh, down here. Um, you can see that the, the fulcrum is right here, there's a lever right here, and it exerts force on that. You're going to see that often. So a lever, um, you can now see that sort of idea of here. This bar here is a lever. So the fulcrum is right here. A piston moves it in and out and then uh, you know something on the outside um, is causing force. So there was, we didn't do the math, I should have made the student do the math to say how much force this piston is going to in order to obtain that, you know, whatever force we need. Um, let's move on. Okay, now we're getting into something sort of um, a little bit more complex. So we've been talking about levers. So one lever very useful, you know, for gripping things. Now we come up with some other things, um, such as this mechanism. This mechanism was on a robot in Portland in 2007. The, the game in 2007 is we had these inner tubes, and what this team decided to do is, most of us gripped the inner tubes from the side. This team said, well, why don't we just go down plunk this device in there, expand the fingers out, and then pick up the inner tube from the center. So what they did was they built a ring of aluminum with three levers right here connected to a bar that is connected to a screw joint. So the screw joint pulls it in, pulling these, lever, or these bars in, and moving the fingers out. So the lever is, you're going to see that uh, in, in a lot of places on the robot. Um, so just the, the ball picking the uh, tube picking thing here. Okay, so <coughs> Darren, can you please explain your robot? <laughs> um, <laughs> There's something called a four-bar link. You're going to see this often. A four-bar link is basically a parallelogram with pivots on each of the nodes of the parallelogram. Um, this is a powerful device for first. So the levers, you just have, the levers are easy because you just have one fulcrum. But if we put a bunch of pivots together, we get very complex things. So the, the parallelogram that is on the, the 2046 robot is, this is one side of the parallelogram right here, the other side is up here, and these two bars form the other two sides of the parallelogram. So basically what this does is, if you 
produce a force on one of these bars, it keeps this bar and this bar parallel to each other. So this, if you need something to go up uh, parallel from the, the floor, you want a four bar. So what happens is each of these faces is a pivot. Um, this bar here is going to move forward and then extend these bars. Here's the bottom of the bar. You can't see the top, but they go <laughs> move in parallel. This robot, by the way, is here uh, today. It's in the commons. So um, if you want, they will be more than happy to show you what this four bar linkage is. But the four bar linkage is one of the most uh, sort of critical linkages of a first uh, robot. You will also see it, <coughs> 488, excuse me, 4888 has their ramp here. Um, their ramp was also from two years ago, but you could see the four bar linkage here. So here's one side of the the parallelogram. This whole platform is the other, and these two are the sides. So, you know, they have sort of reinforced it with two bars on this side, but it's basically the same thing. It's two things, and they shift up and down parallel to each other. Um, on this robot here, these two things are gas springs. So, what a gas spring is is just um, something that when you compress the cylinder and the piston together, it generates a lot more force. So uh, it's basically like a spring. The spring always wants to be in the extended most position. So what they do did on this year, they compressed this down and they latched it. And at, it was only at the end of the, the round that they needed to extend that up. So once the robot, the other robot, um, 120 pounds of robot, stepped onto this platform, it was, the springs were enough to raise it up uh, a foot off the ground. So um, you see another example of the four bar link. So the four bar link, um, some of the critical sort of features of the four bar link is you want to sort of have the pivot points either parallel or extending out. You want to make sure that nothing in these four bars crosses, is going to cross each other. You always want to be sort of a parallel, think sort of parallelogram. So you can see in this little Lego uh, demonstration that the the um, basically this will pivot up here. You can see the way it pivots and the, the pivot joints. Um, here's a one with a much narrower sort of, but it produces the same thing. So if you cross the, if you cross two of the pivot <coughs> joints, it's a bad idea. So here is a, the Lego demonstration here with the pivot point cross. So it's a very small pivot area here. At this point, you can see the two pivot areas start to overlap, and then it's sort of um, a little catastrophe right here. Now, if you want your robot to do this, then that's, you know, that's, you know, having the pivot points very close together, so when they raise up, they overlap, you can, but it's probably, oh, good grief. Jim! <laughs> Sorry, I didn't disturb you. Oh, that's oh, too, too late, Kevin. Um, so if you, you want to make sure that the pivot points don't overlap, is what I'm trying to say in this demonstrative slide. Um, so that is good grief on going fast. 